Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is News and Week in Review, where we're going to dive into a variety of news pieces. The topic of the week, which we don't we don't have one this week, unfortunately. Uh, the games I played, and of course, the videos of the week. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with all that, but starting off with the news, I'm going to start with something completely unrelated to the board game scene, because I think it's a big enough deal, it's a sad enough deal, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a big enough thing I'm going to go ahead and include it here, because I just found out I'm filming this Tuesday morning, because I'm actually leaving shortly to go to uh, Adam, to the Gamers Ranch, so if this feels like it's a few days late, it's because it is a few days late, but basically, the Baltimore Bridge, uh, the, uh, which bridge is it called, the, um, I don't remember the name, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, or the Baltimore Bridge, unfortunately collapsed, and there are people missing, I don't believe there are currently confirmed deaths yet, but there are people missing, and it's not looking good. Uh, the very short notes on this is, uh, basically, there was a cargo ship that lost power, it issued mayday calls, giving uh, police the opportunity to stop the bridge, or to stop traffic on the bridge as much as possible, which is why, fortunately, there's only, I believe there's two people, I think six people confirmed missing, two have already been rescued and brought to the hospital, so there are people who have been affected by this, no no question, but uh, basically a cargo ship rammed into the bridge and uh, that brought the whole entire thing down. It's it's weirdly devastating to watch it. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's hard to see something like this without being struck by how fragile things could be. Make no mistake, I mean, bridges are not randomly collapsing. A cargo ship striking a bridge is about as non-random as you can get, but just the, the sheer impact something like this could have, and have, watching a bridge just completely collapse into the water, almost like a scene from a movie, is... It's a lot. It's a lot. But yeah, yeah. I just... There's not, nothing to do with board games at all, but it is a relevant news piece that just popped up, and uh, I, I... Yeah. I, I, the best of wishes, and... I mean, I hate saying it. It's always those things you hate saying, but like thoughts and prayers to all those affected, and I hope that whoever is missing can be recovered, and hopefully there are no deaths. I mean, we'll see. I, anyways, that's... I don't know. I, I'm not good at bad news. I cover board games. That's what I do. I cover board games and happiness. To me, the worst news is usually like, hey, you didn't get your game, which is not great, but it's not it's not some of the serious stuff that occasionally pops up. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and two. speaking of bad board game news, we have Larian Studios, and this is not really board games per se, but it's board game adjacent enough that I figure it's worth covering. We have Larian Studios is not going to be making any more Baldur's Gate games. They have a whole press release over here talking about how they're basically not diving in more into Baldur's Gate. I can't really tell if it's a licensing issue with Hasbro or if it's just a lack of of interest on their end. Meaning they kind of phrase the whole thing as, hey, they don't want to keep diving into it, they don't want to do DLC, they didn't want to want to do a Baldur's Gate 4, so they're kind of just not doing it. But also, reading between the lines, I can't 100% tell if it's also a licensing thing with Hasbro, and I don't know. I don't know entirely, but either way, the studio is not making the obvious next move. Uh, they've obviously put out Divinity Original Sim, they put out Baldur's Gate, so they have a lot of things, uh, they have a lot of talent uh, over there at Larian Studios, they made Divinity Originals in the board game, I do wonder if we'll see like a Baldur's Gate board game, which would be funny, because that's basically, you know, D&D &D to an extent, but anyways, uh, that's basically what's going on as far as um, Larian Studios and Baldur's Gate. Uh, moving on over there, we have the Codenames Publisher, Check Games Edition, CGE, a bought its own board game factory. If you've watched any of the board game, uh, the videos from the, the, the board game documentaries from CGE, if you've seen any of their factory tours, they have a lot of fun things going on over there. But basically, they went ahead and bought their own factory because they're large enough to do that. They print enough to go ahead and do that, so that's fun little news over there. We have coming up from there, we have Halo Flashpoint. Uh, this is going to be a website to do to Halo Flashpoint. Does not look like it's hitting crowdfunding, so this looks like it's purely, you know, pure to go ahead now. But if you're looking for an officially licensed tactical miniatures game coming to you from uh, Mantic Games, we have Halo Flashpoint over here with a. Uh, do we have a better picture? Can I zoom in at all? Here we go. Here we go. Let's zoom in a bit with a picture over here. It looks a little bit like Apex Legends, but cheaper. Not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, the price point's going to be cheaper too, but I'm kind of getting Apex Legends, but cheaper vibes. Obviously, it may be very, very different. I don't know how it'll actually play out. There's going to be a skirmish game set in the Halo universe. It feels more mass market, personally speaking. Then again, it's Mantic Games that does line up. But either way, there's a free Master Chief model with every spot edition box set. So for 100, 100 pounds to go ahead and get your hands in it. So definitely priced a little bit, uh, you know, on the expensive side, uh, but not expensive. Expensive, expensive, expensive relative to mass market. But that's Halo Flashpoint, in case you're interested in that. Uh, we have over here Railroad Tiles. This is going to be from Horrible Guild. This is going to be a take on their Railway, Railroad, um, Railroad Inc. Railroad Inc. They have Railroad Tiles instead, so giving you a tile lane game, a Carcassonne competitor, uh, between uh, between building off Railroad Inc. and between the fact that it's a tile lane game and between the fact that it's Horrible Guild. I'm incredibly interested in this title. I hope it delivers as far as just how good it is or could be. But you can very much see the Railroad um, Inc. style of, of tiles over there. Very interested in this one. I hope it's a phenomenal game because I really like Railroad Inc. and I'd love to get this game. Then we have, uh, from over here, if we have Stomag Games, they have I, has, I Was Hacked This Weekend. This is the most recent blog post talking about his experience having his Gmail hacked into, his YouTube taken over, and a whole lot of panic ensuing. You can read the article, you can watch the video, 
this is something you should definitely look into or watch if you are, well, anyone who has protected stuff that you need to worry about. Like, I mean, there's, there's two kinds of things you can lose. There's losing access to your email, which sucks no matter what, and there's losing access to your business, which is a different conversation. Whether your business is YouTube, whether your business is Shopify, your bank accounts, whatever it is, uh, there is a whole... A whole bunch of stuff that can be compromised very quickly, especially if you use like that single site login and all this stuff. I, I mean, this is I have a lot of protective security stuff set up for myself, for my for my Gmail, for my channel, and all those things. And the idea of this is absolutely terrifying. So, yeah, it, it's scary. It's scary. I mean, he had he had two factor authentication set up and nothing, unfortunately, uh, because yeah, it's just you can go through it and read read through it. It sounds like he downloaded something and that caused the issue and just. It's terrifying. Uh, life out there is terrifying. Fortunately, he did get everything back. That's the good news. There is a happy ending. He got everything back. Uh, the hacker was kicked out, so he was able to rally around that, which is fortunate, but not everyone's going to have that impact. And yeah, it, especially, it's, it sucks. Anyways, uh, happy ending, but sucky situation. Then we have Board Game Wire over here reporting on the miniature market thing. Uh, I talked about this briefly uh, last week or two weeks ago. But there was a bit of a news piece that Miniature Market had been taken over a new ownership. It does seem like it's a uh, two longtime Asmodee managers bought out Miniature Market. So Board Game Wire goes fully into this in case you want the full deep dive on what the actual story is, what the, uh, you know, the situation, who the people are, the relationship with Asmodee versus not. That's all over here in this article. And then lastly... Lastly, we have Ravensburger becoming the exclusive distributor to, uh, to to distribute Othello across all of U.S. and Canada. So that's going to be cool because Othello is actually Othello is a relatively fun game in terms of it's a relatively fun game. It's one of those games that I, it's, it's kind of broken. If you play Othello with me, I will win unless you know the exact same things I know, in which case it just comes down to luck of the draw. And no, I don't just mean getting the corners. But Othello is a broken game, but it is a very fun game. I have lots of fond memories playing it. It's a fun game. Uh, now that Ravensburg is distributing it uh, over, you know, next year on GameFound, we'll see the giant deluxe version of Othello. That's not actually a thing. I mean, I assume it won't be a thing. It could be a thing. It could be a thing. It could be a thing. Not like not for gamers, obviously, but like I wonder if that would be an interesting way to pull like a lot of mass market people into crowdfunding. A deluxe, over the top version of Othello. How could you even do it? Because you have to flip the pieces, so you can't make the miniatures, unless you're really creative. But that seems like a lot. Anyways, let's let's uh, save ideas for. There's no, to the best of my knowledge, there's no uh, Othello coming to GameFound. To the best of my knowledge. But anyways, that's what we have as far as the pieces of news, which means it's time for the uh, well videos of the week and all that stuff. Because there, like I said already, there is no topic of the week. I have a busy, busy week, unfortunately. That's why I'm filming this on Tuesday. Usually, I film the weekend review on Wednesdays or Thursdays. I'm filming this on Tuesday because, like I said already, I'm heading out to Adam to the Gamers Ranch. The amount of travel I've had the past few weeks, it's been. I think it's been the most I've ever traveled in like a six week period ever. It's it's a lot. It's taking its toll on me. But either way, let's go ahead and uh, I mean, these, like I always say this about what I do. What I do is I love my job. I love what I do, but it's it's a ton of work. It's an absolute ton of work, but it's work that I continuously take on because how could I not? I'm constantly interested in taking on. I'm constantly interested in in learning in learning new games and playing new games and in, in, in going to conventions. Uh, everything I do is a homework assignment I voluntarily take on for myself, which has its own consequences, but I'm left I'm left completely drained all the time, but enjoying my life, so there is that. But anyways, as far as the uh, video, the, as far as the topic of the week, we're going to skip that. As far as the video, the, the week in review, starting off with what I played, we have a few things. First of all, I had a chance to play Mod Kala at PAX East. Mod Kala is an upcoming game from Manny Tremblay from uh, Druid City Games. It's basically Mon Kala, but as a dueling game. So you're dropping little to tokens off in pots, you're taking asymmetric characters, and you're trying to activate your pots to deal damage and trigger your abilities. Basically, asymmetric dueling using a Mon Kala mechanism. Very interesting game. Uh, I I'd have to play it more to get a longer sense of where it is, but I certainly enjoyed it and want to dive into it more. And also, it feels very, very unique as far as games go. So I expect that to be seen. Uh, it's going to be coming into you from the, from the world of Wonderland's War, that's the whole Mod Kala theme going on there, but either way, that's going to be coming to you from Jude City Games at some point in 2024, I believe. Uh, we have Roth Co-op, and I had a chance to play Roth Cooperative uh, again with uh, Manny Tremblay at uh, PAX East, and I was hoping to have coverage for you before the campaign ended, I don't think I will, unfortunately, so um, I will try to have coverage at some point so you can late pledge and all that stuff, but I hope, hope to be having solo and or co-op coverage of, of Roth. So I played, a, I played a cooperatively, not solo. I definitely enjoyed it while being unsure, again, where it lies. My instinct is that I prefer it multiplayer. My instinct is that I prefer it, you know, as a head-to-head -head experience with multiple people. But playing through the cooperative game is basically going to have you taking a bunch of characters, and then the AI is just strong. They're just sitting there very, very strong. Now, the game we played, we actually had a very narrow win. It looked like we were going to be stomped on, and then we recovered and rallied in the second half of the game, managed to persevere past the AI, and managed to uh, overcome its strength with our 
I guess, intelligence, which makes you sound egotistical, but just the idea of the AI is stronger than the players, but the players have more agency in their decisions and can react more, as opposed to the AI is a bit more static, which is a very common concept in board game design. Uh, and that in this case, it worked out very nicely. The AI stomped us for the first half of the game. It looked like it was going to be a clear destruction, and we pulled it out in the last round. Very satisfying experience in that sense. But I have to play it through it more. Again, it's still in the prototype phase. It's very much still has edges being tweaked and cleaned. There are questions that popped up that we had to house rule. And then again, house ruling was easy because we had Manny Trembley right there. Uh, but it is one of those things that still needs still needs adjustments or tweaks. But overall, I thought it was a very solid experience. I just think I still prefer it as a I mean, area control. So I think I prefer it as a multiplayer experience while still enjoying it as a uh, co-opted experience. And I have not done solo yet. I might try to do a film solo game at some point. We'll see if that happens or not, but definitely enjoyed it. And then lastly, we have Boop the Halls. Boop the Halls is an upcoming version of Boop, but this is the Christmas version. It's Boop the Halls. A very fun game. I really enjoyed it. It was... Uh, I like Boop to begin with. I don't love Boop. I like Boop. But Boop the Halls added an extra element to the to the table. You're knocking ornaments off a tree slowly but surely. It adds a different layer of how things get booped around that I thought basically gave you the same core gameplay of Boop with just enough mixed in that it felt more gamified. And so I really enjoyed Boop the Halls. Uh, it's one that I'm looking forward to playing again in the future. But uh, I don't think it's going to be like, oh my gosh, one of my favorite abstracts. But I definitely, however much I enjoyed Boop, which I like Boop, but Boop wasn't the keeper for me, I think Boop the Halls has just a drop more going on for it. That is fun. I've never actually played boop i've never played that one so i've skipped boop and went straight to boop the halls saying boop is a weird game how do you tell people about the difference between boop and boop without sounding like you're saying boop every single time is there a way to do it do you just say boop halloween edition which is almost as fast as saying boop i feel like i'm on a broken record over here saying boop but i don't know how else you do that anyways that's as far as the games i played which brings us to the weekend review we can review starting off with this past saturday I reviewed Sobek 2 player. I played the original Sobek way back in the day, like when I first got into board games. I played Sobek 2 player from Pandasaurus. Uh, it felt similar to Sobek, differences and yet similar. Overall, it's a fun little market game. Not my favorite game. I enjoyed it, but it's not a keeper for me. Uh, then later on Saturday, I reviewed Life in Terra from uh, Eric Lang from Hasbro. Very much enjoyed Life in Terra. Uh, it falls into that vein of tiling, point scoring games that I enjoy. So yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I had fun with it, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, playing it more because I like the variability in it. It's a lot of fun. I've uh, yeah, I've had a lot of fun playing through that one. Then we have on Monday. Monday we had the no, Sunday. On Sunday we had the best 15 games of 2022. This uh well, this is a series I started doing last year where as we enter into a new year, I start taking a look at a bunch of things from the year prior. So not 2023 but 2020 2022 in this case. And so I did a bunch of these last year for 2021 and now I'm doing a bunch in 2024 for 2022. This is the first of probably three or four of these videos just looking back on 2022 and how games fared. So this is dives into the best 15 games of 2022. Now that we've had some time for it to settle. Then we have uh, Monday. We had two back and not to back, going through a bunch of crowdfunding campaigns. A lighter week than usual, but, you know, that's fine. And next week, we actually will not have a two back and not to back. We'll instead have other videos, I guess. On Tuesday. Tuesday, we had a bunch of videos go up. We had a River Valley Glassworks review. So that was a review of River Valley Glassworks. I gave it a 3.5. With the main My main concern is that I wanted more variability from the experience. And there is more variability there. I just didn't know that when I filmed the review because the crowdfunding campaign has, like, seven different modules to mix in. So that really is a nice thing for me because... As expensive as the game can be if you have like the whole, you know, deluxe everything, the tricky part there is that it's a very short, very straightforward game. So I'm very much looking forward to trying it with the various modules and seeing how it mixes up their experience. But that's River Valley Glassworks. A 3.5. I do think the modules could potentially bump it, but we'll, time will tell on that one. Uh, then later on Tuesday, we had a review. We had a live Q&A going up on the channel. Uh, usually these are on Thursday, but because I'm gone Thursday and because I was gone last Thursday, I wanted to get something in so we have some uh, live content going on. So live Q&A went up on Tuesday. And the last day on Tuesday, we had a Primal unboxing. I uh, got my all in for Primal and went ahead and boxed it. And I'm looking forward to playing that one. I'm looking I'm looking forward to playing that one a lot then on Wednesday Wednesday we had a uh, 10 great games I don't feel the need to own uh, this finally went up I've been pushing this video off for a long time I kept on saying it'd be this week this week and then finally pushing off but there's basically a video of 10 great games that I don't feel the need to own it's exactly what it sounds like they are great games and for whatever reason I I'm, I'm happy to play them I just don't need to own them whether it's because of player count or this or that whatever it is on Wednesday on Thursday on Thursday we had a few videos go up as usual we had an Etherstone review hopefully i'm saying hopefully because it's not actually filmed yet uh we'll see if it actually goes up this week if not i'll have coverage for you in the late pledge and something else will be in that spot uh then we have a video we have a fury lands gameplay i did a fury lands or meg did a fury lands preview earlier 
well, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, something like that. And we have a Fury Lands gameplay session one. I do recommend holding out for session two as well. If you're only going to watch one gameplay, hold out for session two because that's going to give you a bit more gameplay. Session one's kind of getting the ball rolling. It's fairly easy, fairly straightforward. It's meant to uh, get your feet wet as you go through the scenario. And this is a sponsored, uh, pre a sponsored gameplay. And then later on Thursday, we had a Dead Keep gameplay as well. This is gameplay number two from the only two gameplays they had in the in the in the prototype or whatnot. Uh, this is not a sponsored gameplay, but come on, has done sponsored content with the uh, with the game. But this is me just diving into it again because frankly I wanted to play it again so if you want to check that out and see how the game is reminder it's rated as easy it's rated it's not it's not easy it's not easy Anyways, on Friday, Friday we had a conversation around cash grabs. What is a cash grab? Does it matter? Does it not? How does this go? Just a little conversational piece around how I view cash grabs and how I think that term is actually very overused as basically an attack on anyone who makes something that is anyway not original, which is, is a fair complaint, but doesn't necessarily make it a cash grab. Uh, and then today, today we're going to have a few things. We're going to have a review for Fish and Cats, an adorable little game. It's more of a kid's family game, but I enjoyed it enough that I wanted to do a review together with Ricky. And then we also have a review of Cordyceps from Part Pandasaurus Game, a very light, straightforward game but a lot of fun very charming very cutthroat very mean but you can check out the reviews for those later today and then lastly uh next week next week we have a few things going up we'll have 10 games where the art got worse this is me taking a look at 10 reprints where the art got worse it's actually funny i saw dice tower has like upcoming or this week i guess they have um the ta ta top 10 games that need a reprint and i was doing a different video 10 games where they did a reprint and the art actually got worse from round one to round two and then also we'll have games leaving the collection as well going up towards the end of this week and that's basically what we have as far as the games in the table most of these are in shrink but these are all games i hope to be playing this week some of them i've actually already played well i play i played vienna over here i want to play more of vienna i want to try the advanced mode uh, i was hoping to get that done earlier to get coverage for you but i never played the advanced mode yet so i want to do that before i well review it we have marrakesh camels and nomads i hope to be playing that one because i've played marrakesh really enjoy that one draft and rate records i played this during the prototype phase i never played the final version i'm looking forward to doing so and then we have rococo from eagle griffin games that i hope to dive into and the reason for these three by the way these four are because these are basically the publishers at adam we have inside up we have eagle griffin games and we have queen games are all going to be at adam and so i figured that if i have a chance of playing some of these games with a little bit more uh ease of jumping into them this would be the opportunity to do so so uh yeah i hope to be playing these ones this week i assume i'll get rococo is the one that i'm a bit more ambitious on vienna's easy to table marrakesh is like new enough she'll be able to and draft and write records i mean that should be easy and like i like the game i already know it i'm just looking forward to playing it again and that's what we have. That has been your news and week in review. As always, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you have an awesome week. And until next time, I hope you have a good one.